Good morning from Walla Walla, Washington. It's a quarter after five. And uh, when you are, are scraping uh, spindle nonsense, uh, it's best to get up early in the morning. <laughs> well, I'm going to update you on what I'm doing here and uh, maybe explain some of this a little bit. Okay, we get that camera off that dry bod. And we'll get over and have a look. Okay. Now, <laughs> what I got going here is uh, a spindle that's not running true, but, and it's been chewed up a little bit. And I don't know if you can see in there. It's kind of hard. And I, and I, I feel like I kind of stick a piece of paper in there too and kind of change. And that, I think that washed it out. Let me click this flashlight down a notch or two. I have to click it up to click it down. That might be too low. Let me try that. There we go. I think that's a little better. Probably the same. Okay. Now, um, I had uh, three and a half thousandths run out, and I've got it to two thousandths. And uh, I've got my most accurate uh, collet chuck right here. I tested it, and it's, uh, you know, probably a quarter of a thousandths. Uh, running true. This is uh, Erickson call it chuck and I've got a, uh, a ground uh, piece of steel in there. So um, so this is my uh, I test for run out and I got this uh, shank here that I got covered with uh, Prussian blue and it looks like that whole thing's blued in there. But let's see if I can uh, show what's going on. Now, you see, I got this mark here, this plus. Now, this is where um, um, the the pin and the chuck has run out. That's a high spot. So I want to drift the holder um, that direction. Now, if we look at that, let's see if I can rotate that. Now, that's a high spot. And I'm going to ro rotate it around to the low spot. I got a zero there on the top. You see that? There's not near as much contact um, at, at the on the low spot. Okay. I don't know if it's showing up very good on this camera. Um, it's kind of hard to see that. So what I'm doing is I'll roll it to the high spot here, and I'll take these tools. Um, this is one of them here, and start working those. Uh, I, all I can do is get a shadow in there. But anyway, I'll get this tool in there and start working that die off. Just scrape the die off and a little bit of metal with it. All those little spots. And uh, I've been doing that a little bit. Use that tool. This tool here has been working real good, too. It's just real sweet. Let's see if I can scrape that off there. Yeah, see, there's there's high spots there. And as I work this, this will smooth up quite a bit. Now, one of the things I do that's kind of helpful is uh, I use a lapping compound. And uh, right here is a strip of lead. This is like a plumber's uh, ribbon lead. And... And this oh, it dropped it. I'll have to get it. Oh, there we go. Um, a can of clover compound. This is a lapping compound. Look how dirty that can is. I've probably had it 40 years. Let me scratch that off there. Clover compound, grade C. This is a, a silicon carbide uh, lapping compound. And uh, it's, it's an oil mix. And see, I just get a little bit in this little uh, oh, nut and bolt holder. And then I take this, I took this piece of lead and I put scratches on it, okay? And then I'm using it as kind of a, a quick lap. Then you take it and you push it down into the compound like that. You push it down. Okay. 
you can wipe off the extra a little bit. And then I rotate the spindle up just under 200 RPM and start working that back and forth. You don't want to use emery cloth to do something like that. And uh, it's just the wrong thing to use for, I don't know, whatever reasons, but this works a lot better, that strip of lead with that lapping compound. So I can smooth over the scraping marks and then uh, better see the dye. So it's like a process that uh, I'm not really removing much metal at all with this. But I'm creating a surface that I can better see the dye and scrape it off and drift that uh, the holders in the direction that they need to, to go in that taper. Hold on a second here. Early in the morning, a little drink of coffee. Mmm. And that is good coffee. All right. So that's what I'm up to. And uh, it, uh, I've done this before, but uh, not on a 40 taper, because uh, this is the first time I've run into a soft steel spindle with uh, a modern taper. You know, uh, I've uh, scraped in old large brown and sharp tapers on old machine tools, milling machine uh, trying to think what brand that was. It was an ancient uh, Kemp Smith. Had a brown and sharp uh, large spindle that was damaged, and I did the same thing that I'm doing here. Now, some tools, this is a World War II machine, and I've seen other World War II machines have soft spindles, and one was a grinder wheel head. You know, the wheel head had a soft spindle in it. And another one was a Carol Jameson lathe that had a threaded uh, spindle nose, and it was soft. And the only problems, you know, it, it uh, uh, that you got to watch out for on antiques like that and something like this is, uh, you know, once you get the spindle true, you really want to take care of it, make sure the tools are real clean and, you know, everything's wiped out. Um, one thing I think I can show, uh, improvement, uh, I believe everything's set up. Now, there's some dye on it, but it'll make it a little bit slicker. Remember when I first stuck, um, if you look in the earlier video, I, I st stuck a taper in there, and it skidded? Well, see, that's starting to stick, and I can turn the spindle with it now, see? before it would fall out. So see, I'm improving the contact and it takes a little bit to pull it out. Look at that, it's sticking. Ah. You can see, that's progress, my friends. <laughs> yeah, the spindle before was so bad that it, you know, it, uh, uh, the taper wouldn't stick. And it just like, it, it skidded like this, dit, 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 dit. and I couldn't turn that, you know, pushing it in, and it would just fall out, you know, like that. So you couldn't really stick it in there. So that's a good sign. And I hope uh, uh, I explained this okay. Now, one fellow seemed really, really concerned that the table slots uh, are somehow not true with the machine. And I was using that brown and sharp gauge to um, slide along uh, using the table uh, uh, slots as a guide to, for instance, align the spindle and, and stuff like that. But I don't know what to say uh, except that I did test these uh, table slots and the edges of the table, and they are true to the body of the machine. You know, that could change with temperature and stuff like that, but uh, this mill here is just a basic machine, and I'm just going to do basic work on it. But uh, I wanted to show you that progress. It, it, it's uh, impossible to do. Uh, I, this is going to take me four and a half hours, and I could yet still fail. <laughs> I have to pull this spindle and uh, 
and grind it. But what I'm doing is I'm just kind of, you know, uh, work on it for about 40 minutes or so. I get tired and I go do something else. I have so many uh, things to do. I got stuff piled up over there on the bench and all that. So I can just kind of pit around a little bit when I get tired of looking down that hole. <laughs> so that's the status this morning. So I'm going to continue on this, and I'm going to get this thing running. I, I don't know. You know, if I got the thing running a thousandths or a thousandths and a half true, I think that would be pretty darn good. But remember, I took a cut uh, uh, with this thing, um, uh, with that uh, facing mill, and uh, it, it did okay. It held the taper, but I, it could have slipped, you know, looking at uh, how bad that taper actually is. So I'll oh, get that all fixed up. Hey, thanks for checking me out this morning, and you have a good day. Bye.